Well, before we end the video, one last interesting point I want to make here. Notice in this picture, the uh, tint in the left picture is decidedly redder than the tint on the right. The beginning of the eclipse has the reddish color or warmer hue, while the end of the eclipse has the bluish color or cooler hue. I'll put it out there and ask you why this might be. My first thought was that it was a direct result of the eclipse, and that everyone standing there could see the hue change in real time in person. However, no one witnessing a total solar eclipse has ever made mention of this before. So I'm now thinking it was a phenomenon specific to the video cameras streaming the event. <clears throat> Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I'm now thinking. Human eyes and brains anticipate changes in color, and more specifically, white balancing, so fast that if there is a change in hue appearance, we've already made that adjustment without thinking about it. However, a camera is an inanimate piece of equipment and is not capable of making white balance adjustments on their own without it manually being done. So as the quality of light to dark back to light changed, so did the perceived change in red to blue hue, but only when watching the video through the camera. My thinking on the reason for this and why it may be was red warm first and blue cool second had to maybe do with one, the direction that the moon shadow was traveling in, and two, the direction the camera was facing. First consider the moon shadow was racing across the earth more or less from west to east. The camera was more or less facing in an easterly direction. Therefore, from the camera's perspective, the moon shadow was coming from behind it over the top and then moving away in front of it toward the mountains pictured in the background. When the eclipse started, the sunlit portion of the area was to the east in front of the camera, while the dark portion of the area, the moon's shadow, was to the west, coming up behind the camera. Because there was more light in front than behind, the result was a warmer, redder hue. But when the eclipse ended, the opposite was true. Now the dark portion of the moon's shadow was moving off to the east in front of the camera, while the brighter sunlit portion was now returning to the area and coming up from behind. Now, because there was less light in front than behind, the result was a cooler, bluer hue, basically the opposite. Just a guess, can't say for sure. Now feel free to leave me your thoughts if you think you might have the answer. One final hypothesis. Had I used the YouTube stream with the camera on the southeast corner of the intersection facing west, the opposite of what we saw, would the results have been the opposite, but for the same reason. In other words, would the start of the eclipse have been bluer and cooler, while the end of the eclipse would have then been redder or warmer? I don't know. I can only speculate that that might have been correct. Farewell thoughts on the video. The C. Jackson Hole channel launched this live stream in July 2016. I'm curious, did they do so solely to boost tourism and the fact that the eclipse in August 2017 was going to go straight through the city was pure coincidence? Or did they set up this live stream knowing full well that 13 months later the eclipse would be visible on the stream? Hmm, I don't know, but to be able to see it from the ground perspective looking sideways I thought was unique. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have, or excuse me, if you like solar eclipses, we'll see you on April 8th, 2024.